Mm -hmm. All right. Good afternoon. Today we'll be presenting on harvesting fluid kinetic energy to generate emissions free electricity via piezoelectric devices. My name is Jesse Martin Gutierrez. I'm a current student at CSUB. I'm currently pursuing engineering sciences with an emphasis in petroleum engineering. Hi, my name is Sarah Jean Boyd. I am a student at CSUB. I'm a sophomore and I am currently studying pre-engineering. Hello, everybody. My name is Maximus Hidalgo. I'm currently a sophomore at CSUB and um, I'm majoring in agricultural engineering. And I am Jesus Quinones, and I am a junior in computer engineering. And I would like to mention our faculty and supervisor, Dr. Sayani. All right, to start off, our motivation for this project was to generate a completely emission-free electricity using quartz piezoelectric devices using a small water resource. And our objective was to experiment and design the most efficient structure to capture most of the fluid kinetic energy ejected from a rotating wobbling sprinkler creating rain-like water droplets onto piezoelectric devices in order to generate the most voltage we can. Piezoelectric devices are, are made of quartz and brass material which produces alternating electricity when it experiences mechanical stress or heat and for testing we we the protesting approach we took was to improve improve upon exist the existing model of a large inverted plastic globe by testing different shapes and sizes of containers to hold multiple piezoelectric devices in different orientations to generate a variety of the results. We also tested different size sprinkler head nozzles to test different fluid velocities and size of droplets. All right, so moving on to experimental testing setup, I wanted to further explain um, how the piezoelectric effect works. So uh, piezoelectric effect is by converting mechanical energy into electrical power. We wanted to use uh, um, fluid kinetic energy to harvest electrical power using these piezoelectric wafers. Uh, these devices, these wafer devices uh, react to stress and heat. So whenever one of these small wafers are pushed or compressed, the deformation created within the crystal uh, allows to generate a small amount of power. Um, and the other side, heat, they react to heat. So we wanted to use hot water so that we can generate a little bit more power when we use uh, the kinetic energy from the fluid. When it impacts the wafer, it might generate a little bit more power. Um, the reason why we wanted to use hot water is because uh, for generations, we've been using geothermal properties. Uh, currently, we use turbines to generate power. Somewhere in the northern part of California, we currently have geothermal plants um, that generate power for a large part of our state. Um, we use CO2 as a form of fluid. Uh, we inject it into the earth and then we allow the heat of the earth 
to uh, heat up our fluid. Then we extract it. We extract the CO2, and that it is then it then it's transferred to these chambers that allow for the fluid to convert into steam, and then we use that steam to allow for the turbine to spin and therefore generate power. Um, we wanted to replace the turbine by using our design of piezoelectric wafers. Um, this research has been going on since last year. Um, the existing design that we started with was this is to, to the left of the poster. The existing design, if you can see it here, and the idea here was that they can connect uh, multiple piezoelectric wafers in series in this large globe. And with the help of the uh, uh, fluid kinetic energy that it's being exerted by the sprinklers, uh, it will impact some of the waver wafers at the same time which then it will create a deformation within the wafer and allow to generate electricity. Our goal was to improve the existing design. Um, so our first design was this one. Um, we thought that it was a good idea um, to use uh, less protective uh, water coating material because we noticed that from the existing design, the uh, coating material did not allow much flexibility of the wafer. So we thought that by removing the, uh, the protective water coating, we, it should allow us to have more flexibility within the wafer and therefore generate more power. So we decided to take a different approach in the way we connected our wafers, we decided to do uh, three rolls of eight wafers. Um, you can see we have a middle roll, and the top row and the bottom row. We connected three rolls in series, and at the end, we connected them all in parallel. Um, our results were not very successful given that um, we use glue. Uh, the reason we use glue was because we thought that if the wafer was firmly placed on the surface of the of the round globe, it should allow it to have uh, a better deformation when the water impacts the wafer. But our results were not as we thought they were. So we decided to improve our design by creating uh, a free space behind the wafer. That moves on to our design number two. Um, the, we decided to use uh, nuts to create this free space uh, so that the wafer can have more flexibility when the water drops that are being impacted, that are impacting the wafer can allow a larger impact and more deformation after, after the impact. So this time we decided to connect the wafers a little bit more different. First, we tested each individual wafer by placing the device in the system and then we wrote down how much voltage each wafer was generating. We took down the wafers that were generating the most power. Then we connected those wafers together in series and we created different groups. At the end, we noticed that two groups were generating the most power. And so we decided to connect those two groups in series so that we can generate our, our final uh, electricity. 
Um, we were successful with the setup, um, but we did notice that uh, our results were not as high as we thought. So we decided to take a different approach by using uh, more flat surface. So we uh, use a smaller rectangular uh, approach. Uh, we use a rectangular housing to install the wafers this time. We use the same approach of leaving a space behind each wafer so for the so that the wafer can breathe and move freely every time it's being impacted by the water. Um, if you notice too, we use a more, a, a less amount of wafers to generate our uh, electricity. Um, that was another thing we noticed that now because we can use, if we use, we thought if we use multiple wafers, we can generate a larger amount of power. And that was not the case. We, what we wanted to see, what we noticed was that only the wafers that were being impacted by the water drops at the same time were successfully generating power. So by using this uh, smaller uh, rectangular housing, uh, it allowed, allowed us to have a more stable direct impact of the water. And also it allowed uh, for most of the wafers to be impacted at the same time. Um, so the way we tested our different designs were, was by using um, our hydraulic bench. Um, we were able to generate a schematic right here. Um, so the way the hydraulic bench works, um, it has a water reservoir at the bottom. We filled that with water. Uh, and then it has a pump that is being powered by a transformer by using electricity. Um, we use uh, different connections to create uh, a water line. Um, essentially a, a, a sprinkler line. And so we use PVC pipes, glue, Teflon, hoses, and some other necessary connections to create our setup. And as you can see here, we have a bubbling sprinkler head. Um, this is where we place our sprinkler head. And as you can see, this represents the rectangular housing that we were mostly successful with. Um, right here at the bottom, we created a wooden platform so that we can place our uh, design number three at the right height so that the wafers can get the most accurate hit when the uh, water flow is on. And so by doing the setup, we were, lot, we were able to hook up our multimeters successfully. And we also created a circuit board. Uh, in the circuit board, we installed a capacitor. The capacitor essentially is our battery. Um, we use a setup here as you can see it, this energy storage system that we created. So the way it works, first off, these wafers generate alternating current. So we wanted to convert that alternating current by uh, to direct current by using diodes. So we created this MOS circuit that allows us to convert alternating current to direct current and then we're able to charge the capacitor. The idea here is that if we're able to uh, generate a steady amount of voltage, we can then charge uh, a battery that can hold a larger amount of, volt of voltage 
and then we can use that power, uh, that stored energy, uh, to gen to to light up, to turn on, to to use any other components that require electrical power. Um, let me explain uh, these four sprinklers that we use. Uh, we thought that by using uh, different size nozzles on uh, the the sprink the wobbling sprinklers that we use to harvest the fluid, uh, the kinetic fluid energy. Uh, we thought that maybe we can generate more power given the fact that if we have a larger uh, nozzle, uh, it's gonna be, be shooting larger uh, amounts of water. And we were right, um, some of the, some of the uh, actually some of the larger uh, nozzles uh, gave us, uh, you know, a smaller velocity, velocity in the, in the, the stream. Um, so we were more successful with the smaller diameter of nozzles because it was giving us a higher velocity stream and therefore it was impacting the wafers more uh, strongly. And that allows, allowed us to generate uh, more power. Uh, you wanna move on, Max? Thank you, Jesse. Um, as Jesse said, we did have four test subjects. Um, one of them as in the senior project of uh, last year's and um, looking at it, we were very confused on what was being constructed there using the wafers um, there. And um, we finally got to realize what they were and how they were used. Um, so going off of what we saw there, we decided to start brainstorming. And um, like Jesse said, it started to use uh, different types of patterns of wafers that we think would work the best to get the highest voltage and amps out of um, out of these fish bowls that we used. Um, the first one that we used, it was a one gallon uh, fish bowl that we decided to put 24 wafers on. Um, what we decided to do um, was try to get the maximum amount of voltage out of and amps out of each wafer. So as you see here in the data collection, um, we only charged up to 16, um, 16 wafers. And you see that it, it all varied uh, very, very much. Um, the lowest that we got was a 0 0.1 volt. And the highest that we, uh, that we got was 0 0.37. Um, once we started to get the, the data from that, then, um, then we started to brainstorm more and to try to see how we can get the most voltage out of our uh, test subject. Um, so that's when we started to make our own individual groups, our in, uh, own individual groups. And that's when we started to um, use a second fish bowl, which is a 1.5 gallon, a little bit bigger than the uh, one gallon. And we started to put them in groups and we started to, um, to pair them up as series because we realized that in series we get more voltage, but we get less of amps. And if by, uh, vice versa, if we uh, put them in parallel, we get more amps, but we don't get as much current, um, sorry, uh, as much voltage as we would in, um, in series. So going off of that, of what we learned um, also to put in, uh, we had thought that hiring the um, the pressure on the hydraulic pump um, that we would get more of a voltage, more uh, more voltage, more amps out of things. But we realized that it was just uh, it didn't give us the results that we wanted. That the volts and the amps would go down um, with such a high pressure of the water hitting the um, the wafers. So we tested out and we tried uh, different types of pressures and we realized that um, the, low, the lower that the pressure is hitting the wafers, the more amps and voltage that we can get out of it. 
And so once we um, we figured that out and we started to get a momentum and starting to um, put our designs together here on the chart, you can see that um, the, the voltage that we got. So here uh, it says the new newly tested design as in the one gallon, the maximum that we got with the glue is 0 0.5, but if we charged it up with the capacitor, uh, for a certain amount of time that we had it running at a low pressure, um, the maximum that we got was a 1.067 the capacitor. Um, and so, but we needed more. We needed more voltage to be able to um, put it into the capacitor to uh, turn on that light. That was that was the goal, to turn on that light. And so after that, that's when we um, used our second design, uh, the 1.5 gallon to um, the 1.5 gallon and to use them in groups and pair them up in series to get the most voltage out of it. And you see here that um, without the capacitor, it was a 0 0.83 uh, voltage. And with the, um, with the capacitor, uh, we did get a little bit less um, voltage out of it. We got a 1.008. And then that's when we brought in the design, our uh, box design, the re rectangular design with only six wafers on there. And we did get the most voltage out of it without the capacitor at two and the maximum being at 2.3. And we let it charge for a while, um, did let it charge. But the most that we got with the capacitor on of, I believe, an hour charge, it was only uh, able to reach up to a 0 0.72, which is dramatically lower than everything else that we got. Um, and we, we were able to collect the data of, um, of each of the, uh, the bo uh, wobbling sprink uh, sprinkler heads. Um, we were able to put that in a chart um, and uh, we were able to put it here, as you can see on the bottom, uh, the difference of the microamps and the voltage that we got out of each size of the um, wobbling sprinkler heads. You can see that they look very, very similar, but um, but they're not actually, they're really, really not. And yeah, if you want to take a uh, take on Sarah. All righty, hi there. That was a lot of information. So we're just going to have a quick summary. So for the summary, we use kinetic energy from fluid to make emission-free electricity. And we accomplish that by using PZO or electric devices. And then the piezoelectric effect occurs when mechanical energy is converted into electricity. In our case, we used the piezoelectric wafers to accomplish this. And then we came up with three different three different designs for our, our project, two of the fish bowls and one is the box design. And we found that the box design works the best with the limited number of wafers. And then for our references, we have the first video is about the piezoelectric effect. And that was really important to learn about because most of us that were on this project had never heard of it before until we had like until the first day. And then the rest of the videos helped us learn how to do the energy storage system. So we were each able to create uh, one of those. And then for acknowledgements, we'd like to thank Chevron for the financial support that they gave to the 2021 Shrimp Program. Um, and then we'd also like to thank the previous year's group for coming up with the existing design that we based the other designs off of. And then we, our faculty member, Mr. Dr. Sani, we'd like to thank him for leading us and help advising us with the project and then for the CSUB and SME Center for making our project possible. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, day. have a good day. Thank you guys.